with a comet scheduled by British Overseas Airways Corporation to start the world's first jet passenger air service, Pathy News detailed cameraman Sid Baines to cover the historic trip. This is his story. A few minutes ago, I boarded the Comet, together with other passengers, making the trip to Johannesburg. Captain Philip Brentnall took us off with Flying Officer Charles Boy, known to everybody as Charlie Boy, as co-pilot. Up to 40,000 we shot to reach the Comet's best operating height and headed for Rome, our first scheduled stop. Then I began to realize what a wonderful ship this was. Like all newsreel cameramen, flying is no novelty to me, but this was something new. There just wasn't any vibration. Before I'd really settled down, we were flying over the Alps. I think I got a shot of the Matterhorn over there. Skipper Brentnall pointed out Corsica, that large mass of land 70 miles away. At our great flying speed, we were soon on the last few miles to Rome. In a few minutes, Peter Panario was asking permission to land. We were over Rome. There was an hour's refueling break scheduled. I chartered a chariot for a quick look-see. I got as far as the Colosseum, where lions used to eat Christians. They tell me you ought to see it by moonlight. Unfortunately, we were due to take off at six. As a matter of fact, I only just made it. The jets were warming up. Next stop, Beirut, Syria, then Khartoum both of which I didn't see as we passed through during the night. But with daylight, we were headed for Uganda in East Africa. Tony Smith, our navvy, was busy. At our height and speed, calculations have to be bang on. We were looking out for Lake Victoria, the largest lake in Africa. There wasn't very much to see through the clouds, but they made a picture. I reckoned we'd done nearly 4,000 miles as I wrote up my log. Victoria, on the northern end of which stands Entebbe, our next stop. Charlie Boy prepared to ease the engines to the skipper's orders, and soon we landed at Entebbe. The weather reminded me of home. One of the things that strikes you on the trip is the change in airport personnel. But the sun was smiling, like some of the local girls, when takeoff time came round, and in perfect weather we left for Livingston. Stewardess Audrey Cartmel assured us everything's fine as she served breakfast. She's always saying everything's fine. The comet was riding as smoothly as a bird. But I soon had to get cracking again to catch the first sight of the Victoria Falls on the mighty Zambezi River, wider than Niagara and twice its drop. We were heading in for Livingston Airport now. Johnny Johnson's engines had served us well. This was the last stop before Joburg. There was just time for a quick close-up of the mighty falls. I ignored a couple of gentlemen with the inevitable souvenirs, which I'll bet weren't all my own work, sir. Can you imagine how Livingston felt when he discovered these falls? A hundred million gallons of water pouring over a 400 foot drop every minute. And then we were off again on the last stage, 600 miles to Joburg. It had been a perfect flight. At our speed, we weren't in the air long enough to get bored. And then suddenly, it sprawled beneath us, a fantastic city built out of the riches of the great Rand gold mines. Those white patches are the waste soil after the gold's extracted. And then we were landing. Britain had made air history again. The world now had its first passenger jet air service. Nearly 7,000 miles by jet. 
I landed at Joburg full of smiles. Any time I have to record history in the making again, I'll travel Comet, please. Every time.